I'm sitting on the pier and I am writing postcards like to my best friend, to my mom and dad. Um, Cause I was also at a time of my life that I was in my late twenties. A lot of my friends were getting married and I had a great career. Um, and I had no like love people in sight. I felt like I wasn't meeting the right people. I was going on dates with the wrong people or like really nice people. Um, I went out with some really nice guys, but they were just not for me. So I knew, I knew what I was looking for, but I just couldn't find it. Um, so I'm writing these postcards, not thinking of anything. And I literally, look up and there's this guy sitting like close to me and he smiles at me and I smile at him. And then we start talking in Italian, which as he told me a year later, you know, my time was really primitive. So he's asking me like, what did you do yesterday? And I can understand what he's saying, but I don't, I don't know enough about the present, I mean, the past tense to actually say like, I went hiking. So I basically say things like, I walk and I give him the list, like my finger to say like yesterday. So we go on and we're just chatting in Italian, in my primitive Italian. And at some point I say, oh, I need to go take my train. It's time. I've got, I gotta go. And in this very formal Italian, he says, I would like to invite you out to dinner. And I'm like, what does this Italian guy want? So I think to myself, you know, in my head, but it comes out, should I stay or should I go? And he says to me, the clash? I love the clash. And I said, you speak English? He's like, of course I speak English. I said, all right, I'll have dinner with you. And, you know, that was 29 years ago. We're still at Vernazza. Now we're married. We have kids. And that, Meeting changed my life. I'm Matt Landau, and this is Unlocked, Season 12, Unlimited Edition, the case for more creativity in our business. Today's episode features Ruth Manfredi of Cinque Terre Vacation in Cinque Terre, Italy. And creativity is often intertwined with authenticity or originality, a connection and understanding with oneself. And I'm going to share briefly why I feel someone like Ruth actually represents the future of vacation rental managers. And it starts kind of over the last few decades where our businesses have grown mostly using standards and consistency and systems as our key differentiator. If we have clean vacation homes on a regular basis, we tend to stand out, sadly, in most markets. But as COVID and the following years have taught us, there's a bigger shift underway. And that bigger shift is about incorporating some newer skills, some newer business values that weren't necessarily front and center back when we first got started. Some of these newer business skills like creativity and authenticity and originality, these are things that don't necessarily come naturally to all of us. They take work. However, someone like Ruth is able to demonstrate not only through her lessons and her stories, but through her voice, her passion, her excitement for what she does. You cannot avoid it. It's infectious. Ruth is able to show us that success in vacation rental management can mean more than just metrics and profits and scale. It can mean happiness and purpose in one's life. These lessons that Ruth shares with us really apply to anyone in any industry, We're just fortunate to have her in ours. First, a quick word from our sponsor. Today's episode is brought to you by OwnerRes, which is a property management software that puts connection first. That is not there 
slogan. I just made that up myself, although it could be. When I use the word connection, I don't think necessarily about the technological aspects, although OwnerRes has all those APIs that you need. I think more on a human level, our ability to connect with one another, both on our team, in our neighborhoods, in our industry as a whole, with our guests, most importantly. Today's conversation with Ruth is all about that connection as the big unlimited unlock. Ultimately, there is no limit to the depths with which we can connect with one another. And it's so purpose-driven that I don't think there's much more we could ask for out of a software company than to place that kind of value at the top of their list. If we think about the way the vacation rental industry is shifting, perhaps away from those standards, consistent, linear, technical thinking, and more of a counterbalance of some new creative, original, authentic sides of the business. Connection, for me, is one of those big game changers, and it sits for Owner Res at the very top. You can head over to their website, ownerres.com, to learn more. Perhaps sign up for a demo. You can ask any questions you may have. And ultimately, if you start using the service, they'll offer you 30% off on your first three months. Just let them know that you heard it here on the podcast. Let's get back to me and Ruth talking all about connection. I think that people are, um, you know, I've been thinking a lot about what do I think is important in my business? What do I think is important in my life? Um, I have been thinking about unlimited, you know, as a concept and what does unlimited edition mean? And I realize it's all about connection. I feel like unlimited addition to me. First of all, I love the idea of unlimited because it feels like a positive to me. Now, unlimited can also be, you know, too much. I mean, you don't want, uh, I don't want to live in a country where uh, the head of the country has unlimited power. So, you know, there are, there are, of course, uh, negative connotations. But to me, when I hear unlimited, I feel like it's very positive. So, I love the idea that when I think about how unlimited edition fits in my business, you know, moving from say limited edition, like my apartments are one of a kind, uh, the kind of hospitality I give is very personalized. And so that's a very niche sort of thing. But when I think about unlimited edition, I think about an unlimited connection to people, to community, unlimited connection to the place where I live and the earth and, you know, unlimited love because it really comes back to it's the love that you have for what you do, for who you're with, for where you are. Um, and I feel like a lot of that has to do with maturing because this is not something I could have ever known at 20 years old. Now, there are 20 year olds who probably know this, but it took me to be 55 to know this. Personally, it does have a lot to do with being comfortable with who you are and knowing yourself. This is the advice I give my kids. You know, what should I study? Well, what do you like? You need to be able to articulate. What makes you excited? And I think one of the things that's really positive about living in 2024 is even if you like the craziest, freakiest, geekiest, whatever word, like you can find your people. You're not relegated to being a weirdo because there are weirdos and they're not weirdos because they're just like you. So... I think that that's a big difference from, say, when I was in college, where, you know, um, it was hard to, it was hard to be completely yourself, depending on who you were. People, I think generally society has evolved, not perfectly. Uh, we're always getting there. But I think it's about knowing not what's a fad, not what the media or your parents, or your best friend, or your husband, or your wife, or who, or your dog thinks you should be doing, you need to do what you think you should be doing. 
That is hard, Matt. It's hard. Taking the time and making the effort to be more authentic is something that I'm focusing on more and more lately because it is, like Ruth says, really, really hard. There are no obvious places to go for this. There's no easy three-step formula. One of the key distinctions I think Ruth makes that's really worth listening to carefully is the difference between identifying what you really like, your tastes and preferences, your unique style of hospitality, but also what you really don't like and your limits in that territory. After all, the longer we go working on stuff that we don't enjoy, the more of that authenticity just seems to erode away. To be unlimited, you have to first know your limits. You first pass through limits. Because if you don't pass through knowing how to learn, learning, how can you ever get to the other side, which is like real creativity. And, you know, um, one of the things that I was thinking about when I was thinking about our conversation, I was thinking about creativity and I was thinking about people who I know who are really creative. Um, my husband and I have a little art collection and we like, we like art. We like, uh, contemporary art now. Um, some really, and we have, we just went to an opening of an Italian artist. She's young. We just bought two works of hers, um, at a museum. And we were talking to her afterward and like, it's a big deal. You know, she's has her own show in a museum. So that's exciting. And she's just nice. Like we wanted to buy her artwork because we've met her a few times. She just, not only do we like her art, but we like her. So when you have someone who is young, um, I think it's good to invest in people. So that's part of the reason why we bought her art. And she's telling us about this show and she's telling us about how she thought it would be easy because they were like, oh, we'll take care of everything. And then when it came down to it, she wound up having to like do the work. She wound up hanging a lot of the art herself, which normally does not happen. The artist, it's very rare that the artist has to hang the work. But she said to us, I really am so excited for this opportunity that I was ready to do anything to make it happen. and." To me, part of that unlimited and, and creativity is also putting in the work. You know, I think people look at creativity and they think, oh, you know, we were talking about storytelling and like you see people when they already, once people are sharing, they're, they're an artist, they're a published author, um, they have a podcast, they've already done so much work, but you don't see it. Because people don't always realize how much goes into the finished product. Matt, I have to thank you because I feel like finding you and finding um, Vacation Rental Marketing Blog has given me all of the tools to actually have success in this business. And now the nicest part is I actually have met a lot of nice people. And I also have the personal connection and yes. So a lot of love to you, Matt. So anyway, last night, Oh, and you will find out soon. I'm going to just reveal it on the podcast. Um, there is a guy who's in our community who reached out to me because sometimes, you know, you can write to people personally. And he wrote to me and said, Ruth, I've been following your Instagram. And I was like, Oh my goodness dude, you got to find someone who knows what they're doing. It's not me. He goes, yeah, but like you have like 3000 followers. Um, I would like to talk to you. Do you, will you, could you like, do you have time? And I was like, oh my goodness, of course I have time. Well, FYI, we set up a Zoom. He's super awesome. Um, and now we have decided that we are going to help each other with our Instagram and we send each other like little tips and we are actually doing creative stuff together. It's just awesome. So first off, listeners, if you can get as excited as Ruth gets about pretty much anything in your business, 
You should be doing more of that. And I think it's a really important distinction to make, the things that get us really excited, the creative pursuits, but also the nuts and bolts, the operational elements that go into actually running a successful business. I want to make a quick throwback to last episode featuring Steve Hafner, the CEO of Kayak. Listen to how Steve distinguishes between true visionaries versus those who maybe just have good ideas on the couch. A visionary is someone who takes the time to think differently and to imagine a future that's different than what people see today, right? So it's, it's a little bit over the horizon. Um, but I also think a visionary is someone who actually is pragmatic and gets something done. You know, anyone can dream about living on Mars or being an interplanetary species like Elon Musk talks about. But a, a true visionary actually makes progress towards achieving it, which he's doing, right, with, with Starship and other stuff. Because um, there's, there's a lot of wishful thinkers out there who imagine something. But if, you, if you're not actually taking tangible steps to make it happen, I don't think you're a visionary. Back to our conversation with Ruth. Listen to how Ruth talks about the practical side of running a business to make space for the creative pursuits in very much the same way that Steve did. I realize that the reason I love this business is because I already went through the hard part, the starting up part. You know, when I, it sounds like I'm doing all this creative stuff because now I like think about my Instagram and I'm thinking about my blog and I'm thinking about helping people and Okay. In 2018, when I started, I had no systems in place. I wasn't focused on, you know, um, all the issues of uh, how to figure out profit and pricing. And so if you want to spend time being creative, the first thing you need to do is you need robust systems in place to run your business. Because when I was just starting and I didn't even know what I was doing, I was overwhelmed. When you are overwhelmed, you cannot be creative. That's my own personal feeling. Now, there is a reason why writers and artists go to writer's colonies or um, get sponsorship to spend six months creating. Because if you are thinking about oh my goodness, the guests are coming in 10 minutes and I'm cleaning still, or my cleaning lady didn't show up, or uh, I don't know, I have to make a bed or whatever you do. You are not having time to work on like the higher level uh, links with your guests or human connection. You're just trying to survive. I think this is also a reason why I give a lot of credit to people who, you know, work two jobs, work three jobs, have kids. It's very hard to have a lot of things going at the same time. So one of the reasons why I feel like I've come to this now where I need to focus on what I'm good at is because the more I do of, on what I'm good at, the more success I have, the more money we make because I can do the higher level stuff. Um, but it took getting deep in the trenches, floundering around. I was stressed out in 2018 and 2019. And then COVID hit. And I will tell you, when we had COVID in Italy, all of my bookings got canceled. I didn't know if I could afford to, I had a woman who was, who was my next door neighbor who was helping me because she had had a baby and he was little. So in 2018 and 19, she was doing our cleaning for us. Cause I said, sure, bring your son. So she'd have him like strapped to her back. And it was wonderful. I love working with women. I love working with moms. Um, and I also feel like a really important part of hospitality that people don't think about are the people who are doing the work of cleaning the apartments or the hotel or working in the kitchen. So I pay the people that work with us more than the going rate. They're an important part of my team. Um, so I feel good about that and feeling good about that Let's me focus on the bigger level stuff. But in 2020, when I couldn't know if I even had guests, 
Matt, at the beginning of 2020, I had to clean the apartments myself sometimes because it's hard when you don't know what's going to happen. Courage is another one of things like creativity that um, is hard to think if I have it or not. But yet, of course I do. I mean, most of us do, right? Um, I think courage is not necessarily running into a burning building every day because that's not something that, unless you're a fireman, that's probably not part of your job. Um, but, you know, I have lived, I moved to a new country. I, I've taken a lot of risks that have been calculated in my life. So I think I do have courage to change, courage to accept new adventures. Um, I think that my... People, I was thinking that this Keystone event would be about my business, which everyone I think thought like, oh, I don't know. We're going to talk about like revenue management. Yoo-hoo! Right? <laughs> it is absolutely important to talk about important tools and tasks and of course, increasing your profit. But in fact, let's talk about courage because actually courage is at the basis of everything we do. Like life has been tough and I am really, really good at focusing on like my business because I can get into a flow, but I wasn't so good about thinking about like, what do I need in my life to like be a better human, to, to be more relaxed on a daily basis. And one of the things I talked about with my little group of people who I didn't know before that day. So it's hard to be intimate with people that you don't know right away. But I do think that you and Steve Schwab, who's just a rock star of a person, um, you created the right feeling of comfort to create, to allow people to have the courage to say what they actually want to change in their life. And I feel like the keystone, the way it's set up, the way you set it up, is doing that. You are actually giving people a comfortable place to meet other people where they are and together, in our case, with courage, take a leap into the unknown future. What can you craft for yourself that you didn't think about yesterday that you might actually start doing tomorrow? The other thing that I realized that takes a lot of courage is accepting that things, when you change, are hard. It is hard to change. And you know what? Even after Keystone, do, am I good every day with my new changes? No. I'm not. Some days I really fall off the wagon. I don't take a walk because I don't know, because I don't feel like it. And then I'm like, okay, Ruth, come on. You can be, you know, you don't have to be average. You can be better than average, but that doesn't mean that you're failing. I mean, it's a balance. It's a real balance. My sister is a, a good example of someone who she's a professional athlete. And like, she definitely is more disciplined than I am. Um, and that just comes from inside of her. And it's exactly what you were saying. Like, it has to come from inside. It's not someone else telling you. But even if you're not a professional athlete, whatever you want to do in life, you can do if it's a priority. But you have to constantly reevaluate your priorities because they shift. And because if you really want to get what you want, you actually have to focus on it. It's quite interesting to point out the difference here between really wanting something and being willing to do the things that are needed in order to get it. So for instance, if you really want more time to yourself, you may need to relinquish control in a way that you haven't done before in order to delegate better, let's say. Or if you really want to take your business to the next level, you may need to get more honest with yourself than you have before about what's feasible or about 
What is you getting in the way? I think it helps if you have people who are supportive of you. So that doesn't mean that you have to have a supportive family because not everybody has a supportive family. Um, but you do need to welcome people in your life who will support you because everybody needs support. You know, uh, that's what I was saying before. Uh, it's just nice to talk to someone who's going through the same thing as you or something different. So you can just, sometimes you need a little pat on the back. Sometimes you need a hug. Sometimes you need a kick in the ass. I mean, there are all like, uh, you know, I mean, I'm not all, uh, I mean, of course I'm not like, <laughs> I'm not all about like everything's easy, just you know, wish it into existence. But sometimes, getting back to what you were saying before, your biggest support comes from inside yourself. And I am still working on that, Matt. That is not easy. I, some things I'm really good at, other things I'm still working. I love the fact that, um, things change and you get new people. There are so many possibilities in life, some that we know about and some that we discover and it opens up like entire new worlds. With my family, we were up near Modena and we went to spend the day at the Ferrari factory. Now I have no prior interest knowledge. I have no interest in cars. I literally, whatever car is fine. I don't look at cars. I'm not into cars. A to B, as long as it has four wheels and a steering wheel, I'm good. Um, oh my goodness. We went to this Ferrari factory and museum. Who knew? It's incredible. The engineering, the creative genius to create these cars. I mean, there are worlds out there to explore. And so when you think about unlimited, my goodness, like I'm not going to have enough time on this earth to, to discover all the stuff. Such a wonderful, open-ended and excited note to end on, as I think could be said about so many of Ruth's thoughts in this interview. She's so articulate with her feelings, but also so darn excited and passionate about everything that she talks about. And I think that's really my big takeaway from this conversation. If you're excited and passionate about your work, it will work and it will rub off on others. And that that process takes work. Many of us started off passionate and excited, but eventually felt spread thin, started to burn out. What I think Ruth has taught me is that there are paths in a new direction, back towards what makes you excited, what you like, what makes your business original. That is like a really reaffirming thing for me to hear. Whether you're a small business or a large one, that path inwards of getting excited again about what you do, that changes everything. What a beautiful sentiment to take into the weekend. Thanks to our sponsor, OwnerRes, for supporting this interview. Feel free to head over to their website, ownerres.com. And if you do a demo, they'll offer you a discount on your first three months. Just let them know you heard about this on the podcast. Also, if you'd like to join Ruth and me and a number of other guests on this season's podcast, head over to vrmb.com slash membership, where more than 1,000 creative short-term rental operators are collaborating under one virtual roof. That's vrmb.com slash membership. Until next week.